today we're going to be doing some technical training. Uh, I say technical, we're not going to be anything really in depth, not going to do a whole lot of troubleshooting, you know, anything too technical. What we are going to do is a technical overview of some of our newer scales. We're going to start with the 7550, which has actually been out for a while, uh, but it's still relatively new, good to be refreshed on. We're also going to take a look at the Apex, Solo, and Icon scales. Uh, we're going to be looking, especially with the solos, apexes, and icons, we're going to be looking at the scales that those will be replacing. We have some several models that are soon to be obsolete. Uh, again, we're going to give a general, general overview of our scales and some basic technical and setup information regarding them. Starting with the 7550, this is our uh, wall mount wheelchair scale. Uh, you can see here it's on the mounts on the wall and then the wheelchair platform folds down uh, So when it folds up, it's a nice low profile. Uh, you don't have a scale sitting in the middle of the floor all the time uh, And it's kind of nice and already stored out of the way The weighing platform is very low to the ground you use a very flat load cell in this scale uh, Which allows us to get just a maybe um, not for sure what the dimension is But it's very close to the ground uh, compared to our other scales Another uh, thing about this scale, you'll notice on either end of the platform, there's kind of a larger column. Uh, those columns have gas cylinders in them. Those assist in the raising of the platform so the user doesn't have to uh, lift the full weight of the platform. It also helps when bringing the platform down so the platform doesn't actually get, accidentally get dropped and damage the load cells. The 7550 does mount fully to the wall. Um, where the scale approaches the ground, there's supposed to be a quarter to an eighth of an inch gap there. So it is fully mounted on the wall. Um, it's mounted completely by this bracket here. So the bracket mounts on the wall and then the scale hangs inside that bracket. Uh, with the 7550, we do not include mounting hardware for the scale other than the bracket. The reason for that is because there's a variety of different situations that these can be mounted in. It'd be very difficult to try to accommodate all those applications when, um, when providing hardware. One other thing to note is the 7550 must be mounted vertically, yeah, perfectly vertically as much as possible. The reason that's important is because a lot of facilities will have some trim along the walls, um, either at the bottom or maybe you know, waist high or so. And um, so if that's the case where the scale is going to be mounted, Either that trim needs to be removed for that section, or um, if it's thin enough, the scale can be the mounting bracket can be shimmed out, and uh, so it can be offset from the wall just a little bit. Either way, the scale needs to be vertical when it's mounted. One uh, thing that a lot of people will recognize the first time they're exposed to this scale is when the platform comes down, the two load cells that are farthest from the wall when the scale is empty will actually not be touching the ground. This is normal. The scale is supposed to be that way. It helps um, the platform be the way it needs to be when there is a load on the scale. If the scale is mounted too high, that um, those two load cells will actually be touching the ground and it can cause incorrect weights uh, when a patient does get on the scale. You can see here, um, the, I tried to outline in blue where the mounting bracket is. So really there's the mounting bracket has two um, hooks on it and then the scale rests inside those two hooks, as you can see there. I mentioned service for this scale. Again, we're not going really in depth, but there are a couple things I wanted to note that are special to this scale, different from any of our other wheelchair scales. Here's a comparison between our 6550 and the 7550. The 6550 is our portable wheelchair scale that has the fold down column. Um, the bottom side of that scale has, looks like, 12 screws. Once those 12 screws are removed, you can access almost anything you need to in the base of the scale. The 7550 does not have that, so it's a little bit trickier to get to the inside of the scale where the load cells and the junction box are at. One thing I will note while we're here, I mentioned the gas cylinders earlier that help with the raising and lowering of the platform. It is very important to not remove these. If those, these are removed, it's very difficult to get back um, in place to reinstall. So we really advise to leave them in place. That being said, because of the gas cylinders, uh, we highly recommend using two people when making any repairs to these scales. 
because when we start to lift up the platform, those gas cylinders are going to try to pull up on the parts that are still attached and moving parts are not a good thing so we recommend two people want to hold that in place while the other person is able to remove the components and do what they need to do. So we saw with the previous slide the 6550 we removed the bottom plate with the 7550 we removed the top and in order to do that we need to peel back the four corners of the main mat, the mat on the main platform. When we do that there's a screw that will be removed so there's four screws to hold the top on. Once that's removed this is what the exposed load cells look like. The screw in the middle is right where the, uh, the screw hole in the middle is right where this screw is at. So that's where it's anchored to is directly to the load cells. And here's kind of a basic um, overview of what the, uh, where the junction box is. I wanted to include this because most of our scales now uh, have wires that plug into the junction box for each load cell. So there'll be four individual wires. This particular model has a little red plug. It just plugs right onto the junction box, which if changing the load cell makes it really quick. Just unplug that, install the new load cell, plug that new plug on, and it's ready to go. So now we're going to move to the solo scales. The solos have a built-in mechanical high rod, which is what you see here. And these models, I mentioned earlier, we have some soon to be obsolete models. This one replaces the PD300 and the PD300 MHR, so a previous ProDoc uh, stand-up position scales. As far as assembling the Solo scales, it's uh, fairly simple. Here's what comes in the box. There's the top piece that has the display and the top half of the column and height rod, the bottom half of each of the column and the height rod, and then the platform and then the screws and the mounting hardware necessary. So really, in order to assemble the scale, all you need to do is take the bottom part of the height rod, attach it to the top part of the height rod, and then the same with the column, bottom to the top, and then that whole assembly uh, fits into the base of the scale. A few screws hold it all together, and it's uh, ready to weigh as one assembled unit. The Solo is powered by either using AA batteries, which mount or which are installed in the, the behind the display here, or using a 9 volt power supply, 9 volt DC power supply, which is what we're using today. When starting this scale for the first time, uh, you'll be prompted to uh, select units, either pounds or kilograms. This is actually a feature that we're going to see in the Solo, Apex, and the Icon scales. Uh, once the initial units are set up, it is possible to change them later, but it will. But at any time, the scale will only weigh in kilograms or it will only weigh in pounds. There are two different setup modes for this scale. Uh, one is the real basic setup, uh, the non-weight settings. So if we just hold down the zero key, oh, I'm gonna turn the scale off. Turn the scale off. Hold down the zero key. And turn the scale on and it comes up and prompts me to enter in time. So, um, and then we can cycle through the different time and date settings and there's a few other settings in there as well. In order to do calibration, it's the same basic uh, procedure except for you press and hold the zero and the enter keys while we turn the scale on. It takes us into a different setup to where we can calibrate the scale. One thing to note about the calibration is that it requires, if it's in kilograms, it requires 50 and 150 kilograms to calibrate, or for calibrating in pounds, it's 100 and 300 pounds. So we use two um, weights and then um, an empty weight also to complete the calibration. To use the scale, to simply weigh on the scale, it's a matter of just simply stepping on the scale and it will automatically lock on the patient's weight. Um, whenever the patient steps off of the scale, the weight automatically unlocks and will return to zero. Uh, if, it, if it's desired to have that weight on, held longer, um, it can use the, we have a lock unlock key that will hold the weight until that button is pressed again. To use BMI feature on this scale, uh, it will calculate BMI. It's the same procedure, except for when the weight is locked, you go and go ahead and hold the weight, and then you can press the BMI key, and it will allow you to enter in the height of the patient using the up and down arrow keys. Once the height is entered, um, the 
you can press the enter button and it will display the BMI for that, for that patient. So now we're going to move on to the apex scales. Uh, the apex um, has either a built-in mechanical height rod or we can be ordered to have the sonar height rod which we'll see later with the icon scales. The Apex SH, the one with the sonar height rod, will replace the PD300 DHR. And the Apex, um, this one, the one with the mechanical height rod, replaces the 6337, 6339, 6127, and 6129. Uh, one great feature about the Apex scales is they can also be connected to an EMR system. Um, we're not going to go into the ins and outs of that right now, but that's what part of what these scales are designed to do. As far as scale assembly, uh, it's really the base, the column, and if it uses the sonar height rod, if it's the Apex SH, it will have the sonar height rod as well. So, to assemble these scales, um, the column will have, will have a We'll have a plastic cover, which we'll, we'll see um, where it goes in a moment. Uh, but the column has the blue, of, or a, a cable that comes out of the bottom of it. That cable gets plugged into the jack that's at the base of the column. Then the column actually sits down in the platform, gets set inside that socket. Uh, there's four screws that secure the column in place. And once all that's done, this black plastic cover from up here gets slid down and covers all of that up. So the only things exposed are a USB port and a power jack. Um, as I mentioned with the Solo, it has a unit selection when the scale is first booted up. Um, Apex is the same way. We'll see that the icon is the same way also. Uh, we'll see in a moment that the units can be changed within the setup menu of the Apex. Again, it's either pounds only or kilograms only, but it can be changed back and forth. There's just no units button to, to make the switch on the go. As far as calibration, uh, we recommend using at least 50% of the capacity of the scale. Uh, this particular model is a 600 pound capacity, so that'd be 300 pounds. Um, it can be calibrated with less, but we don't recommend it because it doesn't uh, allow us to have nearly as accurate of a calibration. One nice thing about the Apex scales is uh, the units, if they are changed from pounds to kilograms, uh, recalibration of the scale is not required. A lot of facilities have recently gone from uh, using pounds primarily to using kilograms only, and some of our scales had to be recalibrated when that uh, change was made. The Apex is not, so we'll also see that with the icon. To operate the scale, we have um, the mechanical high rod, uh, so we can uh, calculate BMI based off of the height on the uh, height rod and the weight on the scale. So to do a weight only, it's a matter of simply stepping on the scale, and the scale will lock into the patient's weight once it's stabilized. Uh, when this happens, there's a timer that's set um, within the setup of the scale. And when whatever that parameter is set to, the weight will lock for that number of seconds. With the solo, as soon as somebody stepped off of the scale, the weight would go back to zero. With this, even if the patient steps on the scale, the weight will stay locked. To do a BMI calculation, uh, it's best to select the height using the arrow keys on the side and since it's manual height rod and then follow the same weight procedure and just press the BMI key when the weight is locked and the screen will change to show a BMI. If the scale is an Apex SH, again the model with the sonar height rod, um, all of that is done automatically. The only thing is once the weight is locked, um, they just have to push the BMI key and the BMI would come up because the height rod automatically detects the height as well. So going to the icon scales, uh, they have the sonar height rod standard. You order an icon, it's going to have a, a sonar height rod on it. It also ships with a power adapter, and the power adapter really helps keep up with the power requirements of this touch screen display. It's got a nice bright touch screen display. 
this particular model, the ICONS, will replace the 8430 models and the 6430 models of scale. As far as assembling the scale, as far as assembling the scale, it's identical to the Apex. Look familiar? This is what we saw just a moment ago. The same exact procedure, the, that connection in the base of the scale looks exactly the same. What we did not see earlier was the height rod. So the height rod, uh, there's a bracket that will be attached to the back of the column. It's empty right now, so that needs to be removed. And then there is a wire that comes out of the column, and that connects to the wire that's in the base of the height rod. Once so those are connected, that cable gets uh, stuffed down into the column to hide it away and keep it secure. The bracket gets put back on, and once those six screws are in place, it's all nice and secure. One interesting thing is that height rod actually comes up and follows the curvature of the column, so it's all nice and a clean looking installation. Um, I failed to mention this a moment ago, but the unit selection, the initial unit selection is the same. Uh, you'll be prompted for pounds or kilograms, but it can be changed later on. To calibrate the scale, uh, let's actually get into the setup of this one. Um, to get into the setup, just press this button here, and what comes up on the display is a list of all of the parameters. Um, they cannot be changed right here, but we can view them. Uh, so be really handy from a from a troubleshooting standpoint. Uh, in order to get into where the settings can be changed, press the setup on the touch screen, enter in the password, which by default is 64870. And now we can see those same settings, but we can touch them and change them if desired. So like on this first screen, it has the units, pounds and inches. I press that and it changes to kilograms and centimeters. Uh, so that changes the units of both the weight and the height. I can press these right arrows to go through. I can see the capacity, some different settings there, and the very last one gives me an option to calibrate the scale. So with the icon, the calibration is in the same setup as the rest of the parameters. Um, again, with the icon, we recommend using at least 50% of the scale's capacity whenever we do a calibration. The Icon actually has a 1,000 pound capacity, so a lot of places won't have 500 pounds of calibrated weights. It can be calibrated with less than that, but we highly recommend using half of, at least half that capacity to give us a really good accurate calibration. And as with the Apex, the if the units are changed, like I just changed the units from pounds to kilograms on here, uh, we do not, we're not required to recalibrate the scale, so that's a good feature. Operation of the icon scales is very simple. <clears throat> uh, we get back to the main screen here. All right. So there's two different screens that we can use on the icon scales. This one has the height, weight, and will show a BMI calculation. Uh, the top right button switches back and forth between the two screens. So the second screen has just weight. So if that's all we're wanting, we can do that. So in order to do BMI calculation, all we have to do is step on the scale, it'll automatically lock in the weight and the height, and it will display the BMI, everything on the display at the same time. As with the Apex, those items will be locked on uh, for, the, uh, for the amount of time set in the settings of the set of parameters. So if we want it to be five seconds, and it'll lock in for five seconds, even if the patient steps off of the scale, height, weight, BMI will be displayed. If BMI is to not be used, again, it's just a matter of changing the screen and the same exact procedure as far as the patient is concerned. Stepping on the scale, it locks in automatically. 